So now before we kind of go ahead and understand what is why is unsembling required. So you have an intuition, mathematical intuition as to why is unsembling required, right? Now let's kind of take a more theoretical concept, theoretical approach towards understanding why is unsembling important. So the first concept to understand there is the concept called strong learners and weak learners. So what are weak learners? Yeah, as the name suggests, it's pretty easy to guess, right? What is it? It's something that is not really performing well, right? So how do you kind of detect a weak learner? Well, the answer, short answer is there's nothing which mathematically says this is a weak learner and this is a strong learner. There's nothing in literature which says that, okay, if you have AUC which is less than 0.8, that's a weak learner. AUC greater than 0.8 is a strong learner. There's nothing of that sort. Much like outlier, there are different ways to define a strong learner. Much like outlier, there are different ways to define weak learner. So the definition of all of this strong learner and weak learner are more theoretical rather than practical. So what does the actual theoretical definition of weak learner say? Weak learner is anything that produces an accuracy which is slightly. And when I say accuracy, it's not really accuracy. It's basically any performance metric you measure. The model performs slightly better than a random classifier or random regression, right? So anything that, any model that performs slightly better than a random model is something that you call weak learner. Anything that performs to any arbitrary, you know, anything which is basically not a weak learner, basically then comes into the category of strong learner. So what is the concept of ensembling? Ensembling is that you combine such weak learners, which are independently slightly better than random models, but you combine them, all of them together and produce a strong learner. Right, so this is the theoretical concept behind ensembling. Now there's a slight question which I, you know, which probably should be cropping up in your mind right now. So uh, how do we again say that there's a guarantee that your model would always perform better than your ensembles, right? How do you know, sorry, how do you know that ensembles would always perform better than your more individual models? Is there a mathematical guarantee towards it? Yes, there is. And what we have done now is just be kind of build on an intuition. We kind of build an intuition through that iPhone example. But there's a much more mathematical rigorous proof that kind of goes behind establishing the fact that ensembling works much better than individual learners. And that mathematical proof is part of the additional read resources. So please go through it and ask your instructor if you kind of get, don't get a really good hang of it. So what do we do? So I think I have already talked upon this case. So ensembling is basically a very good kind of combining multiple weak learners and then combining them into a strong learner, right? So that is ensembling of weak learners. But then obviously, as as much as I have already spoken, does every every kind of ensembling work much better than other? you know, much better than individual models. Is there a mathematical guarantee? Is there a guarantee that every time I do ensembling, it would be much better than my individual model? Well, the short answer is not really. Even in fact, if you go through the mathematical proof, you will see there are a number of assumptions. Under those assumptions, it's a guarantee that your model would obviously, your ensemble would perform much better than your individual models. But then it's not necessarily a given. There are certain obviously, uh, you know, I would say, uh, catch some some there are obviously certain assumptions which get which can might or get you know flouted while you are trying to build your models so just keep that in mind it's not a given that every time if you have an ensemble it's necessary that it would perform much better than each of your individual models but the short answer is also this that for most of the industry cases for most of the uh, you know practical scenarios like uh, apart from industry cases like you know going into Kaggle research problems, Kaggle competitions, all of them use ensembling, all of them, right? All industry problems, all Kaggle research problems. In fact, most of the problems in academia, everyone is using ensembling because at the end, it's simple intuition, right? If you have one model, if you can build one model, uh, and if you can also build multiple more models and somehow combine them also. So why do you want to stick with one model, right? Because ideally your one model could be biased towards certain parts of the data. It could be certain biased towards certain classes. Why do you kind of want to go ahead and build just one model, right? A much better, much intuitive idea is that, you know what? Let's at least make more model. You can probably from there decide which ones to kind of take for ensembling and not that is something we will talk about today a lot more. But obviously, if you have the computational resources, it's much more easier and intuitive to say that, okay, I have the resources, let me at least train multiple models. We can see how to combine them. That's something, a decision that you have to take. And we are going to be talking about that. But if you can train, why not train, right? 
So that's the concept. So here we are kind of talking about some of our intuition, which is more again non-mathematical intuition about when is when are the conditions when you know the wisdom of crowd is not really good. You can kind of tend to see that also sometimes you know exhibited in form of democracy elections, right? A lot of time we would tend to think that okay, democracy as a whole did not take a good. A result right so why is that so so this is a physically phys I would say not sorry this is a philosophical intuition behind it not really a rigorous mathematical if you go through the proof that is part of the additional resources you would be able to get a much more better hang of it so what are what are the different conditions under which you would tend to say that okay wisdom of crowd is better than individual wisdom of each of those individual people right so first option is they should be independent right fairly simple each of the each of the voters should not be biased by other voters, right? If that is the case, then you should be tending. If your each of your voter is not getting biased by the other voters opinion, then you would tend to say, okay, each of the voters are independent and probably a good person to take a rational decision on their own. The next is there should be diversity of opinion. Again, not each of your voters should not be completely biased towards one particular opinion. Even they're doing it independently. If they're biased towards one complete opinion, or you know one complete political party by themselves then also it's not a good idea to go ahead with that kind of a wisdom or democracy right because everyone tends to be biased so diversity of opinion should be there obviously decentralization what does decentralization mean that members are able to specialize and draw conclusions based on local knowledge so based on what they know locally, they should be able to assimilate what is the best decision possible independently right without kind of depending or drawing their conclusions from a global perspective and aggregation is that there should be some mechanism which can combine the individual voting of all of this process into some final conclusion right so each of the voters would be giving some have some opinions there should be some way to combine them which in case of democracy is the election process right so given this there are four such conditions which are filled these are philosophical conditions please keep them in mind this is nothing that has really translates much into machine learning but to kind of get an intuition that not always is a wisdom of crowd better than the wisdom of individual voters. So Sudovaiki's framework help us make sure that ensemble of ML learners improve overall, overall performance by decreasing the variance, decrease the bias and decrease the predictive force. Now why does it decrease the bias? Let's first understand that. What is bias? Bias is when you have you have completely underfitted your model, right? So if you have a model which is completely underfitting each time, that is model has got really high bias, right? So we would tend to see that all of our models which are weak learners, right? We have talked about ensembling when we talked about ensembling weak learners into strong learners. So weak learners are not are the models which are slightly perform slightly better than random, right? So basically they have got a high bias. So when you have high bias models, each of these individual models are high bias models. You combine them, you would probably tend to get a model which is much better than the originally each of them right so this is the same example we had seen with the iphone case right so you see in the iphone case each of the model each of the individual friends right you had youtube gadget reviewer you had your friend and all of them had different biases and they were all high right say 80 percent 70 percent 60 percent when you combine that what did your bias come down to right so sorry your bias was 20 percent 30 percent and 40 percent when you combine then your bias came out to be 2.4 percent right so that is the exact concept that we are talking about when we say decreasing the bias and what does what do we mean by decreasing the variance so variance is also if you if you individually if um, each of your model might be trained on a subset of a data or might be trained on you know uh might be trained on the same data but it could be overfitting right decision tree logistic regression all of them tend to be more overfitting so it's fine if you're doing individually you're just taking one model that's a bit of a problem because you have an overfitted model. Now, if you take multiple overfitted model, because between them, the, each of their prediction is variant. If each of their prediction is like widely varying, right? So they, are, they have a high variance. But when you kind of take an aggregation, average of all of these models, then your variance kind of goes down, right? Because each of them have slightly high bias towards one particular data and that's why they individually are very variant. But when you kind of combine them, your model is now much more better than your individually each of those models so your variance also goes down so and obviously because all of this goes down you improve your predictive force so now 
to understand how do me ensemble methods work there are only two parts to understand right so let me kind of explain that via diagram so what is ensembling again so ensembling is that you have one particular training data so this is your train data and you kind of train multiple models on top of this right so this is a model m1 this is a model m2 this is a model m3 this is a model m4 right so you have trained multiple models and then only thing that kind of remains for us to understand ensembling there are two parts that we need to understand right so how are these models selected so how how do you choose between m which one is m1 how do you does m1 needs to be a logistic regression does m1 need to be a decision tree uh, do we train it on the entire data set do we train it on a subset of data set so that's the first part to understand right whether which what you how do is there a method to madness can i train 200 models can i train 100 models can i train you know just five models whatever is there a number to it is there something to it is there a way i should choose that uh, how many models and do i train it on the entire data that's the first part so understand how to train models and the second part is to understand how do you combine them right as of now you have just seen that there are multiple models we have not yet talked about how do you combine the predictions right so that's the second part So if we can understand these two things, right, the part one and the part two, so then we are very good to go ahead with understanding the entire ensembling concept as such, right. So all we need to now understand is, uh, understand these two important points, but I would still suggest that you kind of take a break here and try and list down some questions at your end, right. I'm going to put up some of those questions which I kind of collect from my classroom activities. But I would, I would really request you to kind of take out some time and list down some questions that you think are very important for you to understand how ensembling works. And then it would be a good idea to kind of check if the end of the session, if your questions got answered. If you did not get your questions answered, go and ask your instructor and try and figure out what are those questions, why are they not getting resolved, right? But the thing is, please try and take out some time right now and try and make those list of questions. I will also be sharing the PPT here. I'll showing the slides here of those sample questions, but let's try and understand them bit. Let's try and list down those questions before we kind of go ahead and proceed with the rest of the session. So I hope you guys took some time to kind of list down those questions that we want to kind of get answered at the end of the session. Now let's try and kind of jump ahead and let's see how ensembling actually works in real life, right? All of this was physical intuition about how you combine models and all of that. Now let's try and take some more real life examples about real life ways of applying ensembling. So the first idea is called naive aggregation, right? So we're going to be talking about that. So the basic concept again, kind of re-summarizing how ensemble method works is this, right? So first step is producing a cohort of ML algorithms and I've talked about, so we have to first understand that. The second is how do you combine the predictions into one aggregated model, right? So the first most basic ensembling is what, what, do, what is the most basic ensembling you can do, right? So most basic ensembling is that if you have five models, each of them say out of them, three of them say that it's a positive class and two of them say it's a negative class. What is the most basic idea that you would want to go ahead with, right? Out of five, three of them say positive. So probably it's a positive class, right? So that is what is called a very naive aggregation. Naive is the term which probably you can understand a lot more better while just in a minute. But the idea is this, that uh, you have models which are trained on the same training data and you're combining them into one particular. So now let's try and let me try and explain that once again. So now let me kind of explain you what exactly is ensembling through. So we are now talking about something which is called naive aggregation. So this is the entire training data. And now you have trained multiple models on it, say M1, M2 and M3. And also let's say M4 and M5. So now each of them could individually be a decision tree or a logistic regression. So this is a classification problem, right? So that's why we are talking about. 
there's a classification problem let's say loan prediction it could be loan prediction it could be any of those other ones that we have seen uh, like titanic problem survival prediction it could be any one of them right and you have trained you have taken the same training data and you have fitted multiple models so each of them it could be logistic regression log r it could be decision tree it could be again log r with some other penalty it could be decision tree with different depth it could be again logistic regression with some other penalty right so it could be basically be any combination let's say right so then what you have from each of them is one particular class output right one one so let's say first consider some case let's say the probabilities are 0 0.6 0 0.51 point 0 0.1 point 0.1 and point 0.6 right so now you have three models five models out of which these are the probabilities for class one right so these are probabilities for class one so probabilities for class one are this so what do you do normally so you can clearly see that this has voted for class one assuming a threshold of 0.5 right we know that 0.5 is not the most optimistic threshold and we have talked about that also but for now we know that if you have a threshold of 0.5 which is a rational threshold you would have a class prediction which would go like this right so yeah out of this five models now you see that three of them have predicted for class one right so what is the final prediction Final prediction is 3 out of 5 have voted for yes. So your final answer is yes. Right. So now this is one kind of aggregation, right? The second kind of aggregation is now what is wrong with this? You can clearly see. So now this is called this type of aggregation is called hard voting, right? Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.